All right, welcome back to Fuck a Socks, the podcast, episode 46. Today on the show, D.L. Hewley is trying to convince everyone that kids having fun is racist again. We make up our own pronouns in this week's Cringe of the Week. They already made us eat bugs, and you're not going to believe what they want us to eat next. I'll give you a hint. It's not even edible. And in housekeeping, they signed an AI rapper that says the N-word too much. All this and more is Fluckus Talks, the podcast, episode 46. Rank the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And action speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than action because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. Fuck the Stocks podcast featuring Richard Bradford. This episode is brought to you by the highly anticipated Contrast Debit Card. Guys, here at the show, we only support America First companies, and we only allow America First companies to support us back. This week's sponsor is the Contrast Debit Card, a new card that is coming soon that's going to allow you, the consumer, to get 10% back on America First products. 10% cash back? That's pretty good. Very good. 10% cash back. And also they're redistributing some of the profits to companies that are based here in America and that produce their products here in America. This is so important now more than ever. We need to be deliberate with our dollars. And the contrast debit card is exactly how you do that. Link is in the description. Sign up for that waiting list today and send me a screenshot that you signed up for the waiting list for a chance to get a base mug sent to your house. It's free, it's easy, and it's for a good cause. This is how we win the culture war long term. The Contrast Debit Card. Thank you for sponsoring. Make sure you guys sign up for that waiting list. This is a fantastic product that's going to make a huge difference. Let's get to the show. All right. Thank you to our sponsor. Very cool. Contrast. Nice. They love us. That's our third ad with them. Very grateful. Uh, Guys, there is another thing causing heart problems and blood clots this week. I feel like every week we're covering this. Yeah. More and more. They They keep adding to the things. Everyone out of nowhere is getting heart attacks and blood clots, and I guess they're finding the reasons. Uh, This week's reason is car exhaust and climate change, which I guess kind of goes hand in hand. So please be careful. Extreme weather conditions, it says specifically. Extreme weather. What? Which what causes extreme weather? Climate change, of course. Yeah, which is actually interesting because climate change... They're really positioned well for climate change because they've basically been telling us for you know the last 30 years, climate change, climate change, climate change, and then no one listens. And then they started ramping it up like the world's going to end in 20 years if no one listens and then no one listens. And then in that time, they figured out the technology to control the weather. Smart. So, so they ca- technology caught up with their claims, basically. Technology caught up with their claims. So now they know how to make extreme weather. So now they're going to bake up some extreme weather for us. They're going to hit us with some super hurricanes or some super high heat or some horrible flooding or big uh, snowstorm or whatever. And everyone's going to be like, ah, we kind of had this coming. Yeah, we deserved it almost. Yeah, we definitely. Exactly. AOC uh, is the one who said the world was going to end in 12 years. And I just looked it up. That was three years ago. So So we're nine years off. We're running out of time. But they have the technology to do whatever they want with the weather. So... I'm sure they'll find some proof, and then at the end, we'll be like, damn, they told us so. (laughs) Fair. (laughs) All right, uh, moving on. We have a very important housekeeping this week. Uh, Richard Rapway, did you punch a lady at the Arizona Cardinals game? No, I did not. I did not. Let's play the clip and see. There's you. You're looks like you're swinging on this This lady. This is a Buccaneers game. Oh, uh, so it was the Buccaneers game, yeah. so that's why I was wrong. Lady fight, dude. There's me in the background. There's me with the glasses <laughs> in the background. Uh, I think that's you right here fighting the lady. So what happened? She hit you first? Yeah, she hit me first. I had to swing, and then she wasn't doing any damage, so I just stood my ground so security wouldn't take me out, obviously. Well, she hit you first. You said so yourself in the video. Yep. Glad you're okay. You look like you're pretty unfazed from it. Yeah, no, women punches, you know? Yeah. Pretty ineffective at the end of the day. All right, obviously that's a bit. We're moving on. Uh, all seriousness, we have a new tip. I try to give tips to people as I think of them on the show. I have a new tip for everybody If you're ever in a debate with someone who's not that smart and they're wearing glasses, before the debate starts, for example, I'll do it with Richard Rapway. Before the debate starts, you say, oh, cool glasses. What's your prescription? Uh, Negative two and a half. Negative two and a half. So Richard Rapway is a smart person with glasses, so he has real glasses. I need them. And he needs them. 
if you're debating someone who's an idiot and trying to look smart with glasses, they'll probably say, oh, there's no prescription or like, oh, these are just frames. And now you've exposed them for being stupid and wearing fake glasses to look smart, which is their nightmare right before the debate. On camera. On camera. And you just go, oh, cool glasses. What's your prescription? Uh, well, there, there is none. These are, these are just frames. Oh, cool. And then everyone knows they're an idiot. Or they say uh, negative two plus one or whatever. And you go, okay, cool. Fair. Um, what about if they're blue blocker glasses? Do you have a plan there? Is that as embarrassing or? It's not as embarrassing. And that's the best defense for anybody. But blue blocker glasses fall under the same umbrella as fake glasses to look smart. Okay. All so right. if they're wearing blue blockers, it's a little bit better than saying, oh, these are just empty or clear frames. Not still embarrassing. Though, still embarrassing. Still people trying to look smart uh, wearing glasses who don't need them. All right. Good tip. Before the debate, nick pit, nitpick your opponent's appearance. And yeah. Start oh, cool glasses. Them. And oh, they go, oh, what's the prescription? They go, uh, there is none. And then you go, oh, oh. Hmm. Uh, but if they say real prescription, then you go, oh, cool. Nothing happened. You didn't lose any ground in the what you gave up. You know what I mean? You say, oh, cool glasses. Yeah. Oh, negative two. Cool. <laughs> I was waiting with a knife behind my back to hammer you if you uh, said it was nothing. Yep. Um, moving on. Uh, moving on. Uh, it's Fleckus' birthday today, guys. It is Fleckus' birthday today. Thank you, Richard Rapboy. We're filming. So, um, happy uh, birthday to Fleckus. Yeah, happy birthday. I've already said it. Um, so let's leave him a $1 super chat, guys. How about Very that? nice of you. It's a great idea. Make it $3, actually. <laughs> $1 is kind of a waste of time, and YouTube takes a chunk, so make it $3. For my birthday, super chat in the <laughs> comments. Everyone who leaves a three dollars super chat gets responded to. And if you leave a twenty dollars super chat with your Instagram or Twitter handle, I will follow you back. Somebody asked me the other day. They were like, "That's a hey, good deal." Yeah, that's it. I guess if the, if you value the follow, somebody asked me the other day. They were like, "Hey, dude, I've been on Patreon. Can you guys follow me back?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, I forgot. We do that. We promise." Yes, that. there is a bonus land <laughs> Patreon level where if you join, I think it's twenty bucks a month. We follow you back, and if we owe you one, let us know. We'll follow you back. Uh, or if you leave us twenty dollars super chat in the comments this week, we will follow you back. Make sure you leave your handle in there as well. We are still in housekeeping. It's a very important housekeeping. Uh, Dan Crenshaw. This week, sided with Dave Portnoy against Alex Stein. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. So basically, there was a fight. Uh, Barstool and Dave Portnoy posted some Alex Stein clip for a second. Um, he was doing a bit about ga uh, gambling in Las Vegas, and then they deleted it. So on this show, obviously, we've been talking about uh, how Barstool isn't on our side. They're not a right-wing company. Not that they need to be, but they're just yeah. not. Uh, and then also, Dan Crenshaw is not on our side. He's not a right-wing person. He's a rhino. So then a week later, after saying all these things, those two people came together and proved how not on our side they are. Yeah, they really, they we danced just, around, ring around the rosy, we showed each other We speak it how, into existence. Yeah. The, no, the Barstool one was funny. And that was kind of like a miscommunication. Like Alex Stein, like I kind of understand the Barstool side of it. Like they took yeah. it down because it was like a degenerate gambling story where it's like, we're a gambling company. Yeah. Alex Stein was doing a bit about how he's in Vegas. He's talking to like the Vegas uh, city council and he's yeah. like- I got drunk and I lost all my money and it was like a bit. It, it was, was a funny. pretty apolitical one yeah. for him. Like he wasn't doing like, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So And he, then Barstool posted it as like a joke, like a meme, like this mm -hmm. is what happens in Vegas. And then Dave Portnoy obviously took it down because they're uh, now a gambling company and you can't um, I talk guess, about degenerate yeah, or addictive gambling. Yeah, exactly. Like PR wise and like HR wise, you can't make jokes like that, yeah. which I understand. And then they went to a little fight, uh, Alex Stein and Dave Portnoy. And Dan Crenshaw signs with Dave Poitnar. Because he got, Crenshaw got heckled by Alex Stein too. So yeah. it was kind of like a forced alliance or whatever. But then Portnoy goes off about like, I'm not on the right wing. I, I fucking hate the right wing. I hate yeah. the left wing too. I'm I hate equal. the right as much as I hate the left. Cool. We I knew that. Yeah. I told you guys that last week. That's why we brought it up. And here we see it coming to fruition. Yep. The whatever is coming back to harvest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Crenshaw uh, this week said 99% uh, of the GOP doesn't agree the FBI is corrupt or whatever. Crenshaw's just taking liberties and speaking for 99%. 99%, Dan? What's your approval rating, Dan, on the right? <laughs> yeah. Like, Can we talk about why, this? Why don't you run for president, Dan? Seems like you got everyone on your side. Seems like you're the nice, rational guy. You're right in the middle. Middleman Dan. Yeah. Don't let us rate, bet on the ponies no more. Democrats would love it if you ran, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, so uh, FBI obviously is corrupt. Russia collusion. They try to steal Gretchen Whitmer. They try to label parents at school board meetings as domestic terrorists. And if you go back further, 
They supported the KKK. The, all the white supremacy symbols are just like the the revolution stuff. Like yeah, the flags. Betsy Ross flag like, is a white supremacy symbol. Yeah. Waco, Ruby Ridge. So obviously FBI has like been compromised since the beginning, I would say. It's become a meme too, where it's like the FBI, it's like he was on our radar after like a mass shooting or like the Boston yeah, bombing every or something. single person. It's like, he was on our radar. It's like, then why did he kill 20 people? So my question for Dan Crenshaw is this. Dan Crenshaw, have you spoken to Liz Cheney since her election defeat directly? Have you spoken directly to Liz Cheney? Since her election defeat, Dan, did you get on the phone with her? Did you hop on? Do you have because there, there's some records? There are records. Did you talk to Liz Cheney directly, Dan, since her loss? Are you friends with her still? Let us know. Cool. So, yeah, moving, <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Uh, Lizzo's chair, uh, Lizzo had a was on a show. And her chair had some big wheels on mm -hmm. it compared to the other guests on the show. Seemed like an industrial type chair it, to me. Yeah, it did seem a little more industrial. Um, and if you look in the background, there's another chair that's pretty normal that could have been used. Yeah. They and everyone else's are normal. We were, I was going to do a bit making fun of her, but I decided not to. I'm a fat fuck myself. Mm -hmm. They're in the temporary studio we're in right now. There's termite damage on the floor. I'm actually falling through the, the floor myself mm -hmm. here. So we're not going to make fun of Lizzo too much. She did have the industrial chair for that interview, but that's it. We're not going to extrapolate why. We're not going to make fun of anyone. Uh, but I just wanted to point that out. She did have this mega chair for her. Well, she's a self-identified big girl, right? Yeah. So, I mean, there's no shame in the game. Big girls need big chairs. Makes sense. So They were about to change all the flying standards for airplanes. So <laughs> yeah. big girls need big chairs. Uh, last piece of housekeeping. An AI rapper was signed. What's his name? His name is FN Mika, like FN and then M-E-K-A, FN Mika. And he's like a total degenerate rapper, like clown AI generated image. Wow. And, and it says, it says uh, becoming the world's first AI artist to sign with a major label. He has 10 million followers on TikTok. So guys, a computer has 10 million followers on TikTok. And they got signed and then rappers are pissed. It said rappers are pissed. Yeah. It's kind of like the rap version of like trans com competitors. Like if like a guy is competing in women's sports and everyone's pissed. It's so true. This is like the the rap version of that. And uh, should we play it? Should we play yeah, a little version? play a little clip. All right. Let me toss this up. Got the Gucci whip. Yeah. The Gucci cyber truck and he's dancing around in his computer. And people were complaining because the rapper says the N word a lot in his raps. And it's also created by white people. The AI was <laughs> So it's like they're basically trying to say that the white people are saying the N word. By the transitive property. Yeah, yeah, I think that works. Um, my, my immediate thought was like, he's talking about like shotguns and like this. Imagine like some people were listening to this, like hyped up before they committed a crime. And it's like the AI computer song got them all hyped up and they robbed a guy. That's probably what it is. Cause AI is trying to eventually take us back over, uh, like they did thousands of years ago. So yeah. it would make sense if that's how it played out. This is a huge step up from the, uh, Tupac holographic, you know, mm -hmm. uh, performing at Coachella or whatever. Because then at a certain point, it's like the way they in like stores, they have like robots at checkout and stuff and you you eliminate people. If you can get AI to entertain people, you kind of like, what does that AI cost? You don't have to sign anything. You don't have to sign like a nice deal with him. You, yeah. rip, that, you rip the AI off. AI works for free. It's like a, it's like a slave. 100%. Capital Records just signed. It's like they, did, they didn't tell you how much money they paid. <laughs> how much money do they give to the ether? Exactly. <laughs> Well, it's just like they give it to the three white guys who programmed N word, N word, N word. <laughs> so, N word, N word, N word, shotgun, shotgun, Rob, Rob, Gucci truck, Gucci truck. <laughs> and then that's the song, I guess. Um, yeah. Before politics, I used to write like little rap lyrics because uh, I had like a dream of being like a ghostwriter for rappers. Mm -hmm. A lot of them were vulgar and inappropriate. I can't say them on a show. I'm sure you remember some of them. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do. But I have one that I remembered. Uh, Words can't describe me, I'm Beyonce. And instead mm. of Beyonce, like Beyonce Knowles, it's beyond say. Words can't describe me on Beyonce. That's a good one. That's pretty good. It's right? not one of my favorites, but I, I know we can't say the favorite. I know we can't say the favorite one. Maybe in bonus land, but probably not. Um, that takes us out of housekeeping. That was an expedited housekeeping. We have a very important cringe of the week. This week's cringe of the week's first clip. Um, it's actually not a clip. It's just a screenshot. Uh, in last week's episode, we got fact checked by YouTube. Um, 
because we are talking about abortion. Abortion health information, National Library of Medicine. An abortion is a procedure to end a pregnancy. It uses medicine or surgery to remove the embryo or fetus and placenta from the uterus. The procedure is done by a licensed blah, blah, blah. Medicine? Me- medicine to remove an embryo? Isn't medicine to keep some- somebody alive? Yeah. Isn't man. the medicine, it wasn't the opposite? Wouldn't it be, wouldn't that medicine be like poison? It uses poison to end the embryo's life? Yeah. So medicine, medicine is the word that's associated. It's like a medical procedure that involves medicine to stop a pregnancy. Medicine. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I think it's just crazy that they're front running any abortion topic now. Like what, like you guys, they took the ground with COVID, right? Yeah. And it's like abortion now? Medicine? Don't fucking worry about it, YouTube. Like, yeah. get, get stay out of my shit. Well, they got exactly. They basically got the go ahead from COVID. Mm-hmm. They were like, "Oh, we need to step in. We need to correct misinformation. We need to tackle the problem of disseminating misinformation." And now they use that same uh, justification to hit any topic they want. Now they did it for election fraud, COVID, and now they're going to do abortion. And I'm sure it'll lead. Any to- predictions? What's next? Um, criticism of Joe Biden. I was going to say like, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say like uh, a warning. This was a woman. This is beautiful. And it's just like some trans like Adam's apple type guy. Yeah. Or maybe the Lizzo thing we talked about. Good thing we didn't make any jokes about her. Yeah. So true. That's why we held Lizzo back. is light. That chair was just incidental. It had nothing to do with her. Chair's a chair. They picked randomly. They went mm, that chair for Lizzo with the huge <laughs> wheels and the 500 pound capacity. Yep. Uh, <laughs> 500 pound. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, there's a v- new trend happening where guys are getting vasectomies on camera, like for TikTok. Apparently, that's what it says. Um, and it just shows two super cringe pictures, like one minute until vasectomy. And then this guy in the... I think you can get a vasectomy awake. Yeah. Where they just do uh, like local anesthetic or whatever, and then you just smell your uh, whatever burning. burning. Yeah, you smell... What, what is that called? Carter, is it car- carterized? Yeah, but what's the tube called? Whatever. I don't care. I'm who cares, right? We don't Nobody here should be getting a vasectomy unless you have 10 kids yeah. already. So, guys, this isn't going to make her like you. <laughs> In fact, it's the opposite. You've convinced yourself to cut your own balls off. Pretty much. Pretty much the opposite. You and then like people hypnotized. People also think that a vasectomy is easy to reverse and uh it's not. You can have complicated like it, you, technically you can, but it's like you can have complications. I'm sure. And it's what happens when you snip the thing and then everything just sits in the the testy? Vast deferens, I think it might be. Yeah, that was the word you're looking for. Got, got it. So then you just like snip the ball and then the ball is just there and whatever's in it's in it. And what happens? The yeah. sperm have to eat each other to stay alive? Yeah, I think you're, yeah. It creates some sort of, what's Are you a doctor? (laughs) Yeah, your balls fill with piss, and then the cum goes in your butt. (laughs) It's very scientific. Sorry, sorry. Maybe cut that. No, we'll leave it in. We'll leave it in. People are, obviously, this is not the move. People are losing their minds. These guys have such little purpose in their life that they've convinced themselves that them being a man is the biggest problem the society is facing, and then they chop their own balls off. Yeah. Um, Like, have you ever changed your mind on something? Yeah. Have you ever like had a pretty major pivot on changing your mind? Of course. And it's like, these guys are just risking it. Surgery. Let's go. Yep. Um, huge mistake. Um, a lot of these people are going to be miserable. You're going to realize I'm, Hey, I'm 45. Like, dude, I don't have, I don't have anything. I'm just a 45 year old guy with no Especially, kids. Yeah. And like, I'm done. I'm tired all the time. You know, like, Especially when the world changes and everyone gets based and we have Trump and then two year, two terms of DeSantis and everyone's just like Chad and base. And then you're just like, <laughs> got no balls in the house. And you're like, ah, oh, I guess I kind of guessed this one, this trend wrong. Yeah. I, I guess which way society was going. And I guess I guessed wrong. I saw uh, Vladimir Putin uh, did some sort of incentive where he was giving people like a hundred grand or something if they had ten kids. Yeah, uh, giving ladies women and then like a national award or whatever, a hero award. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like that's the wave you should be on. Um, you know, not the uh, post your selfie uh, vasectomy to TikTok boys. Yeah, chopping your. Nuts we don't off. have to tell anybody this. I'm like talking. We, yeah, we, we should mean, just be guys, roasting these guys. Please don't chop your nuts <laughs> yeah. off. Um, next clip: the world's youngest trans model. Has two trans parents. Yeah. um, This isn't really a clip. There's no video. But this is a trans girl who uh, named Noella. This is a guy, a boy. uh, Doesn't ever get nervous or scared by anything. She's a tiny professional, explained the little model's mom. Um, And basically, this is like a sick story where the kid is 10 years old. Mm. 
10 years old with double trans parents. They're both ladies who uh, chopped off their boobs and want to be little guys walking around. Mm -hmm, Can I say this? Yeah, (laughs) I can say that. Um, So they're both trans. Uh, They said this girl was going to be, knew she was uh, something by two, knew things were off when she was two years old. Mm -hmm. She couldn't really even communicate, but thank God the parents took her to the gender clinic. Where they talked in the back room. Yeah. And this is actually in uh, Robert, Ann and Robert Lurie's Children's Hospital in Chicago, which is oh, where I'm from. A highly respected hospital, but mm-hmm. obviously they're doing the gender bullshit. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was just kind of reading this article. I don't know what you want to say on this girl. It's obviously horrific. The parents are parading her around for publicity points and good boy head pats. Um, but it, it just read like a horror story. These two transgender parents. Uh, it mentioned the dad, the biological dad, who they tried to like, who obviously objected to this transitioning stuff. Um, and the girl, he, he was trying to put boys pajamas on her or something. And then the girl had a broken arm at some point or the boy. So sorry. the little boy, the little boy, the dad was trying to put boys pajamas on him and then broke the kid's arm by accident or in that process. So here's the thing. The kid had got a broken arm. I'm not going to believe this article for what they're saying, you know? Yeah. Um, The kid had a broken arm, and then the the trans mom tried to blame it on the dad and wanted the dad charged with a hate crime or something. Interesting. So it's just a total alienation of father. Um, The two trans people run this kid now, and it's a trans model. Yeah. So and then they had um, at two years old they said that the kid knew it was trans already. Yeah. And then it's like, well, that's because the parents it's looking at are like these two mom dads. Yeah. These two little boys who are girls into boys, and that's like very confusing. And the kid obviously is probably print imprinting everything it sees, and it's like, oh, I'm like from this, I'm going to become that, and that's very confusing. But here's where the universe kind of speaks to us and shows us like the irony: the trans model child has two trans parents, two trans parents. It's too transparent. It's too it's easy, too easy. Yeah. to see. It's too transparent. It's so easy to see. It's right there. It's bam. It's the universe telling us that we're on the right side of this. Look how transparent it is. It's two transparent. It's two transparent. Very true. I missed that. <laughs> Honestly, I missed that. Um, which brings, which is why, you know, which is like, this is like a late onset schizo quarter. Exactly. <laughs> By the end, it's like two transparent. Uh, two transparent. Two, two transparent. too easy to see. Um, and so like everything about this just reads like a horror novel to, to people on the right. And where it's like the, one of the, one of the mom, dads, whatever the hell, um, worked for a designer and the trans clothing company. And then another worked for like a trans right, like nonprofit. So it's just like the only thing these two th- people think about is trans, trans, trans. And then they have a trans model son, daughter now. And that's just like proof that like a kid is a blank canvas who can be manipulated who in can any be way. heavily manipulated. And if you introduce it to certain things early enough, you can get them to become something they wouldn't. Yeah. And this is like a completely evidence of that. Um, it also says allegedly came out at two and is set to have gender surgeries at 16. So they're already plotting the uh, the mutilation. And then if the kid says, actually, I changed my mind, it's like, what's going to happen? There'll be a crisis. The parents would be like, ah, I, you said you would, or I'm pretty sure you don't want to be like us. It's not going to be pretty. Yeah. And uh, we I don't think we're going to show it on the show, but we have seen some pretty horrific trans surgery uh, pictures oh, yeah. going around where it's like they take a piece of healthy tissue from your arm or your leg, and then it basically looks necrotic, like it looks disgusting. And then you have some freak sausage, like hanging from the middle, hanging from the middle, and it doesn't work. It doesn't do anything, but it just it's leaks piss. It's a leaky piss dangler. Um, we're not going to show them, but if you guys well, it's here, we'll just blur it out. Okay. Okay. Fair. It's disgusting. It's so, very disgusting. It's like, it's Frankenstein to, stuff. To a child. It's not like it's to an adult. It's to an adult. It's like, all right, buddy, go pay for it and do whatever you want and mm-hmm. live your life. Like, I'm not getting involved in that. To the children. Disgusting. And if the child, so it's like, if the child changes their mind, are people held accountable? Are people arrested? Uh, they should be. CPS needs to come. And this- and- it, not help. <laughs> like, yeah. CPS will be on the side of the transgender. Yeah, I was going to say like um, any sort of institution you call for help above that. It's like, well, we're scared to go against the trans yeah. people. So we're, we're doing this. Um, <laughs> this is this is weird but, sausage dick is fine. It's also like the start of a revenge movie. If you're the dad, oh, yeah. if you're the dad who's like alienated and can't has no say and the courts are against you and this and that. It's just like that's how a revenge movie starts. Um, so true. So. 
All right, next clip. Uh, well, we haven't even done clips yet, which yeah. is crazy, but that's good. We're covering some stories I need to get covered. Not everything has a video. It's not a clip show. It's not a clip show. It's a podcast. It's kind of a clip show. We lean into the clips and rely heavily on them. <laughs> um, how about now we have like the, the God pronoun girl and then the apologize to trans people girl. Let's like play the we have three pronoun people. Let's kind of just hammer through them. God pronoun first. Pronoun so offensive to people. Like, it's a pronoun. Get over it. Um, <laughs> and so I'm going to say my pronouns real quick. And why? So he spelled H-Y um, is because I'm agender. And I just like the masculinity, but I don't want to be associated with men. That's why he H-Y, right? Then I have they, them. And that's just me being like, you can use that. I'm okay with that. Like, pop off. It's like not my favorite, but go for it. I don't care. Zer, I'm fine with. Like, it's okay. I think it's better than they them, but it's it's kind of like the same thing. God is me validating my agenderness. Oh, fuck, I ruined this Q-tip. Um, me validating my agenderness because I don't view myself as a god. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in gods. Um, but I just like the, um, not feeling, but how it's perceived with me. So interesting. You want to just end it? Yeah. Yeah. Let's just, we've heard enough. So I have a, I have an idea and this is not a popular idea among the right wing. We don't like to compromise. Uh, some people on the right wing like to call he's hers and hers. He's whatever they actually are. I just kind of shoot from the hip and just, you know, refer to things. I think they, them is fine. It might sound crazy, but it's like for he and her, I'll shoot from the hip and I'll get them all right because everyone's pretty much normal. Mm -hmm. But then you see someone like this or like a pink hair, the pink hair guy from Culture Thumbnail last week. Yeah, they, they should be isolated. And it's just like, I'll, I'll be like, I don't know what that that is. I don't they know are a is. human. Yeah. So like they are in front of me in line at the store. I'm like, I don't care. Like I'll just they can be pretty much all of the people that fall into the freak basket. Yeah, for sure. I get that. I get what you're saying. But people will disagree, but I get what you're saying. This is a guy the guy that you know, like the pink hair guy from Culture Thumbnail. It's like, yeah. well, it's is it a he or a she? I really don't know. I don't know what's going on with this person. I'm just gonna say they are got some issues. Yeah. And then they go, Oh my God, he used my pronouns. And it's like, I hate they, um, just sight unseen. I hate they, I know I gr agree on nothing, yeah. but I want them to have zero part of my life. <laughs> so I'm just going to say them. Yeah. Uh, and they play that next one, the apology. Yeah. One. So, so if you, if this is what happens, if you kind of like refuse to call this mentally ill person, God, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. This is what happens. This is what you should do. How to interact with a non-binary person from one, Part two, if you get our pronouns wrong or our name wrong, we expect you to stop the sentence, apologize, change what you said, and then continue. Don't do it any other way. It sounds like forceful. Sorry, God. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Sorry, God. It's like sacrilegious <laughs> shit. Like, <laughs> sorry, God. That's so true. That pronoun. Sorry, God. I, I didn't, I didn't mean to call you the wrong thing. God, you're God, right? Yeah. yeah you're God. Oh, my God. These people want you to give up any free will, any sort of common sense, any preconceived notions you have, and just bend to their pronouns of the week. So, yeah, they're, they're the ones in power. Um, and then there's one more lady who makes some neo pronouns. Yeah, let's toss her up. There are like millions of options for neo pronouns. A lot of people even like make up their own ones. I'm just going to do some of the popular ones. We'll start with it. Hello, it would really like a vanilla cone with uh, chocolate sprinkles. Can you pause real quick? That is almost fine with me. Yeah. I thought it would be like, when I, when I said the thing about like they, them and like compromising, it would be in my mind like a little like mean and It offensive. or that. It yeah. or that. Is so if I was like, oh yeah, like it just ordered at the restaurant. I thought people would go, what? Like, well, no, no, what'd you call them? They like that. They're happy and I'm insulting them. <laughs> and it's like, everyone's happy with that one. That I guess. might be the compromise. We might have to swap they, them for it. It and, and that. that. Yeah, that creature. That, <laughs> that creature. That thing, right? So it and that is on the table. That is actually the best option I think we have. Okay. Keep it rolling. And it would really like it in a bowl if you can do that. With and it's spoon. like, you're, you're ordering something at the restaurant. And you're referring to someone else. It's like one large bowl of this one. Like you don't have to tell them who it's going to. They don't give a shit. Right. <laughs> That's so, so true. All right. I'm going to keep it running. It's just less messy the way. All right. We appreciate it. 
So another one I wanted to do was Hue. It's Hue Hue's Hume. And it kind of is short for human, um, which I really like because I, I just identify as a human. I don't really have a gender identity right now. Um, but it would sound something like this. Hue would really like a vanilla cone. I'll get it to Hume. Thank you. It's like Hugh. It sounds like someone's like name, Hugh Jackman. Yeah. It's like Hugh wants a vanilla cone. <laughs> They're stepping on everyone's toes with these pronouns. They're just making shit up. It's Wolverine with a vanilla cone. Yeah. Hugh <laughs> wants a vanilla cone. That's not bad. I, I think it. But I think if I called another, if I called a trans person in New Orleans it, I feel like that trans person would try to fight me. Test it out. But then I can say this lady said it's a neo pronoun. Well, as long I'm as allowed. as long as whatever they tell Sorry, you. Sorry, God. Yeah, <laughs> I'm allowed. As long as whatever they tell you instantly correct and fixed and say reporting for service. Sorry, God. Someone <laughs> told me that it was a neo pronoun for you. God, I'll I'll get better. Exactly. Um. That's it. That's all they do. Yeah, two, two neo pronouns, Hugh and human. <laughs> All right, so we have some of our own neo pronouns. We made them up. R.I.B., you go first. All right, I got Mupp and Muppy. Mupp and Muppy? Yeah, so like, oh, Mupp would really like a, uh ice cream cone. I guess we're doing <laughs> ice cream cones. And it's like if someone's been acting like a Muppet, if someone has shitty opinions, I just call them a Mupp. Muppy, that, Muppsino. That's pretty good. You know, Muppy, Muppy's third grade class learned all of the blah, blah, blah on the pride flag. Exactly. They knew what every line means. Every every so color. My first two are stew and pid. So you can say like stew, or you can call like you can say you call me stew stew if I say something really dumb. Yeah. Hey, stew, stew. stupid. <laughs> hey stew. Stew stew's acting crazy. He thinks the vast <laughs> deference is in the butt. <laughs> yeah. Stu Stu doesn't know how to work the washing machine and all his clothes smell now and he had to go buy a shirt from the grocery store. You know, is that what that is? Is that what you've been doing? I've been wearing the two shirts, these two shirts, the same two shirts all week because I try to do my laundry and I I don't want to sound disgusting, but I did the laundry. It didn't smell right. I put it in the dryer. It didn't heat right. And then I could bake like a gross smell. It's like a musty mildewy. And I keep doing the wash over and over. I never get that clean smell. So I just started buying clean clothes from the grocery store. So are you are you not wearing any of your other clothes right now? You're just wearing the Louisiana. shorts is fine. The shorts I didn't. I have two pairs of shorts, so I didn't put that in the wash because uh, I didn't want to risk it. And then I wear the uh, the undertack underwear, <laughs> the undertack underwear, which is great. And then I free wear, ad. <laughs> and then I'm wearing the grocery store shirt that says what's it say? Native. It says like it's a picture of a crawfish and yeah. it says native. Don't hassle me. I'm local. Yeah. So. That, so I'm Stu Stu for that one. Yeah. Stu Stu uh, can't wash his clothes. There you go. That's a good example because I've been washing my clothes fine. <laughs> well, I need a little help. Yeah. Um, all right. You're up next. Uh, that's it. I was going to say Stu Stu as well. We kind of use Stu Stu as a phrase. Yeah. I go, hey, Stu. Hey, like Stu. When, when he's doing something stupid, I go, Stu. One time I So we actually yeah. are using neo pronouns we like, are using neo pronouns at the airport there was like a <laughs> idiot guy one time that had like three masks on i was like hey rap boy look at that guy with three masks on and he goes hey stupid <laughs> hey Stu." <laughs> i think i said Stu. i wouldn't have said stupid hey, at the airport i go hey Stu." <laughs> so Stu is short for stupid yeah um and then my other one is rob and smith but i don't think i was gonna do that one too <laughs> i don't think i fully understood the prompt yeah Oh, yeah. well, uh, Rob wants ice cream. Rob needs the, my credit card to get the cabana. Rob, Robert, Robbie, <laughs> uh, Rob, I'll send, I'll trans, I'll wire you some money from my emergency funds. and You'll get another cabana. If the cabana is full of people, Rob, you don't want to be crowded at a cabana. You need another cabana. I'll send some money over. You know, my credit card info. <laughs> And I open an emergency account, Rob. Get the second I'll cabana. I'll extend a new line of credit. Get the second cabana. Do we, do we want to explain that joke at all? <laughs> or just move on? Let's just move on. Okay. We'll explain it some other time. Or if people really want to know, we'll explain it. Yeah. Let's get into urban decay. Let's. Wait, wait. We got more shit, right? What do we have? <laughs> the woke Utah teacher who uh, makes her class non-white. I, I, I want to. Oh, that is a good one. I guess we can we can ramp this up because the woke Utah teacher. It feels like the last two weeks they've been ramping up the anti-white rhetoric. Everything you see is anti-white. Everything's and stuff. anti-white. So let's just let it play. Even the white people are awesome. White yeah. people are sick. I love white people. They're so they're so nice. You go to a random small town in Minnesota. Everyone's so nice to you. It's crazy. And then they try to say that white people are the worst, and it's like we're not the worst. In fact. <laughs> no, I mean, it's so true. It's like, I love white people. I will not ever stop saying it. White people are awesome. That's yeah. it. My uh, dad's 6'4". Yeah. 
Dude, we're, we're a good mix of strong and smart and like everything. We got athletes. We got professors. We have, you know, we have three, earnest, yeah. hardworking people, blue collar. A lot of blue collar people are just white. Like, this yeah. is great shit. We, we, do three, gr- we have three boys in my family. We all played college football. <laughs> Come on. That's dope. We do good shit here. We do good shit. So let's see what this uh, this self-hating white lady is doing in Utah, too. Um, and I, ju- I just want to say, I know we've always said this a lot, um, but like Utah... Utah, you're doing the race stuff. Yeah. Iowa. It's not Brooklyn. Maryland. You know, it's not these stupid places. It's like Utah. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to let her play. Mormons need to step up. So for the first time in my life, I'm going to be teaching at a majority white school. And I'm kind of interested to see how um, students and parents react to my classroom or if they even notice anything about it um, because it's built for non-white students. Um, And what I mean by that is like, if you look around and you interact with some of the materials I have, you'll you'll notice that there's like no white kids represented in that. Um, So just on like that, that very first level of multicultural education. And I don't think like my new students will mind, but you know, not a single white face there. Same with my coloring pages. I have a big stack of coloring pages that students can use and not a single one with a person on it depicts a white person or character. Um, Cause I just kept looking for, for pages for them that they'd, they'd relate to. Um, all right, let's end it there. She goes on to say she, like, it's all Disney princesses, but it's like Moana and like non whites and, and stuff like Mulan. that. Yeah. So the majority white school. So she's going to a majority white school. It's not like you're like, oh, I'm teaching in the Bronx and all the kids are black and all the pages are white. So I'm going to have some black faces. Exactly. It's like you're at an all white school and then there's no white faces. Yeah. These are the same people who have said for the longest time, like representation matters and seeing yourself matters. And it's like majority white school. Let's start doing ethnic minority stuff. Yeah, exactly. A good friend of the show, um, Frank from Quite Frankly, who we love. Um, he made a great point at the pride rally, like four years ago in New York, where it was basically like the progressive people, they're trying to solve like past injustices by taking the whip from one hand and putting it to the other, instead of just saying like, Hey, the past injustices are done. Everyone's equal. They think they need to go on offense to make up for it. So it's like, instead of going from here to here, you go from here to here. And then like the white people being, uh, stigmatized and attacked or whatever makes up for lost time. And then it evens out, which is like a sick way to look at it. Yeah, of course. And it's, it's just a power shift. Right. Um, and these, these people, and that's why their uh, logic is so inconsistent, right? Um, it's just whatever I need to, for this moment, for whoever's marginalized. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, whereas the founding fathers or people like that, you know, uh, they were trying to make some sort of like rules for everyone. And like, yeah. that's the entire point of all amendments of the constitution was to correct those wrongs and, you know, um, make rules for everyone, equal playing field going forward yeah. as close to perfect as you can get. Exactly. But not these people. She's taking it upon herself. And this is the first time she's teaching a class. So if you're in Utah and this person's your teacher, let's, let's, let's get her fired. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not against cancel culture. People say, Oh, cancel culture. We can't do it. We're just as bad as the left. I'm fine with canceling that person. Yeah, I don't give a shit. I think you should cancel people when they deserve to be canceled. Yeah. Uh, is that an allowed? And again, this is this is not someone having a, a private opinion and saying, oh, look at me. When I'm at home and on my own time, I do this. This is a teacher talking about what they do in the classroom, which they get paid by the you know government, the public schools. Uh, or if she's private, she gets paid through the tuition of the parents who are paying. The majority for, white parents. Yeah, exactly. So- how can she accept that white money? That's a good point. Yeah. She needs to take that paycheck and give it to black people. A hundred percent. And That's if she crazy. doesn't, she's a bigot. All right, Utah Mormons, uh, rise up, please, and go yeah. go take care of this nonviolently. Get this lady fired or petition or protest or something. Yeah. If you're in the Utah area and you know where she works and want to make a fuss, um, we can help with that as well. This person should not be teaching. Yeah. But should also not be harmed physically, obviously. That was clear, right? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. We don't advocate for shit <laughs> like never, that. We never advocate for violence. Yeah. Um, all right. Moving on. Urban Decay. Are we ready for Urban Decay? I think so. I think we're ready for Urban Decay. Our first clip from Urban Decay. 
DL Hewley and Baller Alert on Instagram had another case of racism. In uh, this time in the Little League. Yep, Little League baseball is happening. I think Little League World Series, World Series I'm yep. assuming, is on TV. Uh, and then one of these kids, um, they started putting like piece, they say cotton in his hair. It's like a black kid who has cotton in his hair, and his friends are all putting it in his hair. It's not cotton. It's actually the innards of a stuffed animal. Yeah, it seemed like some sort of stuffed animal giveaway. Yeah, they gave everyone like a toy. Kids don't care. They ripped it open, and they started putting the the white, cotton-looking insides in this kid's hair. Yeah. And then everyone is freaking out. Um, obviously, this is peak fun. This is kids doing baseball. They're yeah. all on the same team. You're They're probably, messing around. You probably have, like, two hours to kill between, like, your next game or something. Yeah. And you're just kind of, like, messing around. There's no entertainment. And they're just messing around. They're putting things in this kid's hair. The, the thing sticks to the kid's hair because of the way his hair is. Because of the texture of his hair. It's not racist. It's just the truth. And it's they're doing it. And they're reality. messing around. They're doing jokes. They're bonding over it and becoming better teammates and better friends. But that's racism. The jokes have to go. No one can talk to each other. If a person's got a certain type of hair, you, it's, you can't acknowledge it. It's normal hair. Everything is normal. You can't do anything. Everyone's the, the same. Everyone's the exact same. Um, so you want me to read some of the tweets? Yes, this is kind of This is, as with all things, it's a nationally broadcasted event where uh, Twitter just reacts to it. And it's all the leftist Muppet blue check marks. And they see it and they go, oh, my God, immediate yeah. racism. Um, and so this is one tweet. Twitter wants answers from the Little League and ESPN on why they promoted a black child having cotton put on his head like a pet by his teammates and coaches during the Little League World Series. Uh, like his teammates who are also like black and Hispanic and white and like all different. They probably love the kid. The, he's probably a good player. They're like, dude, that's our shortstop, you know? Yeah. Like, um, And then uh, somebody else tweeted, protect HBCUs and stop sending your black children around a bunch of white folks without teaching them who they are. Good Lord. Uh, this woman says, a picture of a thousand words. This is why critical race theory is needed in schools, no matter what the circumstances. This is offensive to black people and is unacceptable. So it's like, we need to teach everyone that this is racist and can't be done. Like Kids are just having fun at the baseball game. And then like everything, like all these like calls of fake racism, eventually you figure out that it was actually uh, exaggerated and not even the case. Yeah, and of course. Couple- you think these kids are doing like racist stuff on the sidelines <laughs> of Little Reaver? What are you guys talking about? Like they all hate the black kid on the team. Yeah. And then a few days later, look what comes out. Oh, look oh, at that. Oh, look. A low, white low, kid had it too. A white kid with the exact same thing. White you, kid had it in his hair too. Are you guys stupid? Are you like blue check leftists that stupid? No, nobody's picked cotton by hand in like 180 years. <laughs> yeah. The cotton mill, like the cotton yeah. gin, like th- relax. Everybody f- calm down. Like you they know? emptied the stuffed animal and whatever was in it, they put in the kid's hair as a joke, probably hoping to get on TV. Yeah. And then it's like you jump to the conclusion that, oh, it's cotton and they're putting cotton in the black kid's hair because they hate him and it's racism. Did okay, these- fun, fun way to live like that. I guess we can't have the World Series for kids anymore. Yeah, how old are Little League World Series kids? 11? Yeah, like... You think they know and have all this racist, pent-up rage inside of them? You guys are nuts. Yeah, this is their chance to get it out. Yeah, they're 10 to 12 years old. And then there's always the one 14-year-old from Nicaragua. That's what we should be worried about. Yeah. The big kid who hit puberty three years ago and his birth certificate is is questionable. Yeah, three home runs. Three home runs. He hits dingers. They're in the championship. (laughs) Not this stupid bit. Yeah. All like, right. Have you ever played on a travel baseball or travel basketball? Of course. And it's like you usually have like four hours to kill and you do stupid shit. You yeah. Know? One time we were on a bus and a kid had a hoodie and then we were taking um, sunflower seeds and we were putting them in his hoodie and exactly. everyone would do it. And then we eventually were like, yo, put your hood up. And then he put his hood up and then all the sunflower seeds fell on him. But I guess, yo, put your hood up could have been like a KKK. Yeah, that definitely was. <laughs> and then seeds, what are seeds? They grow. Negro. No, oh, that's bad. Holy shit. So good You thing, were racist. <laughs> the thing I wasn't around in yeah. 2022 for Little League stuff. Yeah. Uh, next clip. Could you imagine being one of those little kids who's like, you're in the picture and you're like, uh, they're calling me racist for nothing? Isn't that, and then the parents, too, who are probably like scared and then like don't know even how to deal with it because the kid's not wrong, but you need to like make a correction because of the public outrage. Yeah. And it's like, uh, yeah, Tommy, you, you were a little insensitive when you were having fun with your friend doing innocent stuff. So I'm going to explain to you why the history of cotton is somehow racist now, even though everyone wears cotton shirts every day. Yeah. Like cotton's not canceled. That's um, so true. 
and so the the funny part is like that that guy's tweet who said we need this is why we need HBCUs historically black college and universities or whatever. The end result after this like racism and whatever is like get your kids away from white people segregation you know do segregation again right yeah um, and we saw with the uh, UC Berkeley thing I don't think we're gonna really cover that. But, well, they had the off-campus house where white people can't go. Yeah, yeah, at the public university, the the UC Berkeley. You know, smart Berkeley. Actually, like, is that private? Uh, Either way, they receive federal money, right? Yeah, they do. And Berkeley is like the what's it called? The birthplace of free speech. And some people say like the yeah. protesting back in the day. Yeah, it's come a long way. Went all the way around. Yeah, they were the first one in, so they're the first one out of, yeah. of the full circle as well. Yep. Uh, next clip: They're feeding kids bugs. Yeah, so this is uh, brainwashing in real time. This seems to be some sort of fourth grade class. You've never eaten a cricket before? No? You tried? Where do you find the cricket to eat? So there's this, uh, there's this company right here in Manitoba. They're called Prairie Cricket Farms. And what they do is they farm crickets and they put them in nice little bags and then you can eat the crickets. And then you eat the bugs. That's good. Whenever I talk about this and talk about people eating bugs, people always message me and they're like, we've been eating bugs for centuries. Like, this isn't anything new. It's like, nah, we haven't. Nah, I'm eating I, steak, homie. I ain't ever eat a bug. Yeah. <laughs> we've been eating bugs for centuries. Kids should not be eating bugs. Go back to feeding these kids Elio's pizza and sugar for breakfast. Bosco sticks. Yep. Bosco sticks, Dunkaroos, and Gushers. The Chocolate kids should milk. not be eating bugs. <laughs> um, dude, I, I, know, I know that's a bit, but um, also I just want to say like, Feeding, handing out crickets to a room full of masked children two years after COVID started. What happened? It really, it really happened quick. <laughs> yeah. These Canadians are really dropping the ball. No, in Manitoba, they farm the crickets right up here in Manitoba. The guy's handing out his business card and shit. <laughs> it's like everything up until this point, up until like 2020, which is like them setting the stage and building the foundation and like take a little here, take a little here, take a little here. And then it was just boom, full throttle, juice it all in. Now the kids are masked eating bugs on, the t- on taxpayer dollars where there's no white, <laughs> no white representation. Like what <laughs> happened? What? This is like 18 months. What happened? Yeah. Accelerationist theory or something like they really throttled it. So no, for real. And then uh, next there's like an article from our friends over at the national pulse. Yeah. Um, so this is like the surprise. They want us to eat. They want, I guess, adults and children. They want everyone to eat something new. It says, now they want you to eat wind turbines artificially turned into gummy bears. Wind turbines. <laughs> it's like the green energy people want you to eat it afterwards. Yeah. Um, and it says, I'm just going to read a paragraph here. It is comprised of a mix, a mixture of glass fibers with plant derived and synthetic polymers. Once blades formed from this resin can no longer be used. The new material can be recycled into a variety of products, including gummy bears. When dissolved in an alkaline solution, the newly formulated resin produces potassium lactate. The compound, researchers allege, can be purified and converted into sweets or sports drinks. We recovered food-grade potassium lactate and use it to make gummy bear candies, which I ate, explained John Dorgan, one of the authors of the paper. Food costs are a little high. Eat some bugs and use metal. Like, I don't want anything that's been scientists have been touching around, right? Yeah, and it's not like it's something normal where it's like they used to say, what, horse hooves or gelatin? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, well, it's part of the horse. It's like now we're just eating metal? Wind turbine we're shit. Eating old or metal Or like metal? plastic polymer, whatever it is. Uh, and it's just like, guys, we don't need to do this. We don't need yeah. to recycle that. Microplastics are bad. These are macroplastics. <laughs> yeah. These are just full-blown, not even hiding it macro plastics so ev- again accelerating timeline never did i think they were gonna the crickets i get okay crickets we can make the people weak they won't have real good protein uh you know people in india can do it so true. now it's eat the wind turbines i never would have seen that coming you know how um people in india you know how cows are great yeah and then like yeah, Everyone yeah, yeah. was trying to do superfoods, and they're like, superfoods, like this weird cranberry or beets and like all these things is a superfood. But the real superfood is like beef. Steak, yeah. And it's like bones and bone marrow and like steak and protein and certain fats. And like that's the real superfood is mm-hmm. steak. Do people – did people in India just get that completely wrong? Because they don't eat cows. They, don't, they worship the cow. Yeah. So are they worshiping it because they're like – we're seeing it. We're like, oh, it's a superfood or are they just completely missing the point? 
and not getting enough nutrition. I don't know. And do they drink milk too? Well, I think a I lot think of their dishes have, are yeah, creamy. They have creamy dishes. Yeah, dairy and India. But if I prefer to buy yeah, butter, the, chicken India experience. is first among all countries in both production and consumption of milk. So they have the they, they the use milk. them, but they just don't eat them. Milk is good, I guess. From my butter chicken experience, it's definitely used. yeah. They're using cream. They're using creamy stuff. Okay. So they're missing. They really could get some protein out of that. They're they're probably not getting. They eat like chickpeas and shit. Yeah, yeah. So. I don't know. I, I'm, I don't know enough. They have water buffaloes walking around there too. Do they eat those? I don't think so. Is that, well, I don't think they ever butcher them. I think they like respect the animal and then they take the milk and they go, "Thank you for the milk." Indians and Native Americans both respect the animal like that. Mm. Fair, Very but weird. one uses every piece and one doesn't. Doesn't eat it. it doesn't indulge in one piece. Yeah. All right. Next clip. 7 <laughs> Eleven ransacked. Yeah. This is from uh, Los Angeles. This is a quick one. We just play this in the background. It doesn't even need any audio. Yeah. Um, an LA 7 Eleven completely ransacked. Everyone is committing this crime as a group. No one cares about getting caught. No one's worried about getting caught. Everybody knows 7 Eleven has like good cameras and are targets for real robberies, like gun robberies, not yeah. just like overwhelmed stuff. Um, and I think the one thing I will point out about this is like, there's different levels of criminals here, right? There's the guy with the mask on who j immediately jumps the counter. There's a guy with a mask on who immediately jumps the counter. Right. And mm -hmm. so like, he knows he's a straight up criminal. He's done it before. Exactly. He's like, my face isn't going to be on. I'm going to start this fire. Um, and whatever happens after this happens. But then all these average people who are like, probably morally, like a little wishy-washy, they're, they're opportunists. Your face is on camera. You're a fat, ugly guy. I can recognize you. Yeah. You, that girl, like, I, I can find this outfit. Uh, you, same thing, outfit, recognizable, interesting hair. Do people just not care anymore? They they just, they assume that the police have no bandwidth to even go through this and make any of these right, uh, wrongs right? George Gascon. Yeah. My just, man, George Gascon. George, man, I got my face tat. I got my face tat of George. George Gascon gonna let us go. Yeah. They so, can't recall him. They threw out all the recall ballots. Man, George Gascon's in there for a while. So speaking of representation too, I don't know. Let me just look real quick, scan this. Mm -hmm. This is a lot like the Utah woman's uh, classroom. Mm. Not a single white person. <laughs> Not a single white face. Yeah. That's so true. I used to so, live in downtown LA mm -hmm. and the 7-Eleven I went to was closed down because it was the most dangerous 7-Eleven in the country or in the world, they said. Really? Yeah. And it would just get, it would get robbed or whatever, like multiple times a day. Yeah. And then they had like a lady security guard who would sit in the back and I never seen her do anything. Yeah. Lady security guard and it just went under. Some fat lady. Yeah. She didn't have it in her. That's not who you hire for the most dangerous 7-Eleven in the world. I'm sorry. In the world, yeah. Then they closed it. They you were hire like some guy. Money. You hire some guy who's 6'5", and you pay extra for it, and he's shredded. You ever see Trump security at a Trump rally? Yeah. It, it's, it's insane. It's you can have the security at the door. You put him in a bulletproof vest. Yeah. And you have a big handgun on him. And then you have him at the He's door, not use and it. he can use his own discretion with who he lets in. Yeah. So if you come in with a mask and a backpack with your buddies, it's like, mm, you're not coming in. Not today. Some lady, go ahead. Yeah. Go buy your yodels. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, that that has the same representation as that Utah classroom, thank God. Um, but, yeah, the brazenness, I mean, that that's a viral clip. Pretty much everybody saw it, right? Mm -hmm. But the brazenness and the different levels of criminality in there where it's like, oh, I'm, just a, I'm just watching or... I'm I'm half in, and then the mm -hmm. mask guy is the one who sets sets the whole thing off. Yeah, uh, just really, interesting. Really quick, let's play this clip. This is the Minneapolis police station from 2017 to 2022. Obviously, the George Floyd uh, riots happened. Was that 2017? No, no, but this is just before. So this is before, yeah. 2022 barbed wire, graffiti, Nothing. barriers never opened back up. I'm sure the crime in the area is doing great. We already covered that last week. Yeah. This so is more of a follow-up. No, yeah, exactly. There's no police station. They probably you know, you know how much a, like a uh industrial building in somewhere downtown costs, especially one funded by the taxpayers who kind of get like ripped off because they're not a private business doing mm -hmm. well and they just take bids. Probably like 15 million dollars to make that building. And they just closed it up. 
and they let the criminals win because people got mad. Because racism. Because racism. And then climate change is above race. Where's climate change and racism? Above, right? Well, I think they go hand in hand. Yeah. I think well, it's intersectional. But I think climate change causes racism as well. And But um, people that are affected by racism are also affected more by climate change. It's very it's bad. It's so intertwined. You're right. It's so intertwined. We can't make a call at this time on this podcast. So that PlayStation was defunded. Tucker did a segment about New Orleans, and he basically said that New Orleans needs 2,000 police officers, and right now we have 500. Let's take advantage. <laughs> Which is why I'm going to be illegally driving around the trike quad thing. Yeah. That's why. Because yeah. I'm. it's like a wild west here. We can do whatever we want. Very smart. Uh, last clip. Last clip of Urban Decay, the train conductor versus the crazy guy. Yeah, this was in culture last week, and it is an interesting de-escalation technique. Yeah. Why you, why you disrespecting your grandfather? He taught you better, and this is what you're doing? Before you should have gone down and tried to enslave us now, and this is the shit you're doing? You should fuck up being married. You don't know now about that he goes to him you disrespecting your grandfather they're trying to enslave us now we have horrible stuff happening in the country and this is how you're acting it's a very interesting way to look at it. there's two different views obviously not all black people are crazy and criminals or whatever or causing trouble on the subway causing trouble and it's like it makes everyone look bad when you do and like there it is that was it perfectly played out in a dialogue between two people the guy working there for the train he probably worked there for years and years and will continue to work there for mm -hmm. years and years and then the street rat guy causing problems, spitting, yelling, profanity, no control, no control. Yeah. And that's basically it. It's like which way Western man basically for yeah. those two people. You want to do the lawlessness every man for themselves shit and fight each other? Or do you want to have like a goal and a purpose and honor and respect? Yeah. And like think about your parents and your the people who raised you and what they taught you. Nah, nothing matters. Let's just go through life picking on people and spitting on the subway. And, <laughs> and the conductor and, goes, "If you need, do you need medical attention? Like, yeah. I'll, we'll get you medical attention." Yeah. Uh, all right. Bad well, clip, uh, and obviously we, we ugly respect. clip, but very telling. Yeah, very telling of the times, and it's like those are the two points of view. It's like the people who are doing the crimes and ransacking Seven Eleven and doing all these horrible things and blindside punching people in the street. Obviously, not many people agree with that behavior, and it's like you need to call people out so it stops so everyone can kind of come back together and get back to normal. And there's that vacuum where it's like this guy, this conductor doesn't – he could just say get off the train. He's trying to like help him and teach a lesson, right, and be like, yeah. why, why are you carrying yourself like this? And there's that, there's that big gap in society where everybody walks by. It's not my problem. This guy's having a freak out. It's not my issue. I'm not going to correct him. And so this type of behavior goes unchecked a lot of times. And it's like nice to see society answer back Trying a little self, bit. Trying to self-correct. Self-govern, Get yeah. back online. It doesn't need to be a police officer. It doesn't need to be this, that, or the other. It needs to be someone who's got something to say, right? Mm -hmm. Disrespect your grandfather by acting like this. It's so true. That's insulting. That's very insulting. That would be humiliating. If someone said you're disrespecting your grandfather um, and, you know, uh, yeah. I think uh, a lot of the – speaking of disrespecting your grandfather, a lot of the uh, stuff we saw in Cringe of the Week is extremely disrespectful to a lot of grandfathers out there. Very disrespectful to the grandfather. We just start using that. Could you imagine explaining that to like a World War II veteran, what those two moms did with that kid and the model? Or the Explain that to someone who landed on Normandy and one of the, and one of the uh, carriers too, like those – I don't – I forget the word, but the, those, those – yeah. Those hybrid like open door things. Yeah, and it's like you have the boy child with two trans parents, and then they say, oh, the boy's a girl, and the old Normandy vet has to, like, what, accept that? Yeah, pretty That's much. That's sad. Pretty much. That's sad. All right, well, don't get too down. We are moving on to our uplifting gold, which is brought to you by our friends at Gold River Trading Company. Guys, Gold River Trading Company loves this show. They are back for another sponsorship, and they are back with the new Product. It is pumpkin spice season. 
Gold River has a fantastic new pumpkin spice tea. It looks fantastic. I haven't tried it yet, but I've been told it tastes great. I've been drinking Gold River tea ever since they started sponsoring us, and I've been very happy about that. They support the show. A lot of people drink tea. Why not buy tea from people that like you and respect and appreciate your America First values? That's exactly what Gold River Trading Company does. Please go to goldriverco.com. Use code FLUCKUS for a big chunk off. And as always, if you show me a receipt that you bought some Gold River Trading Company tea, I will send you a base mug to drink it out of. It's full sending a base mug, no coin flip, no anything? No coin flip, no anything. And if I owe you a base mug from any other promotions, please uh, put it to the top of my DMs because sometimes I don't see them all. But I sent out last week probably 30 base mugs. Wow. Sounds crazy, but I sent out a lot of base mugs last week. So it's not going to be any different this week. GoldRiverCo.com. Use code FLECUS. And make sure you pick up some of this new tea. They have iced tea for the end of the summer, but they also have this new pumpkin spice tea, and it is fantastic. Stop supporting companies that hate your guts. GoldRiverCo.com. Use code FLECUS. It goes a long way. Support the people supporting the show so they come back for more sponsorships. That's actually the fifth of five sponsorships from Gold River Co. Mm. So if it does well and people buy the tea, they will probably come back and buy more sponsorships. If you don't hear from Gold River Trading Company ever again, you guys let me down. Yeah. Dark. That's okay. All right. Uplifting Gold. Uh, the first one, um, skid marks on underwear. Yeah. Not what you think, though. I hit a car, one of those uh, drifting things, and runs over a guy, and his pants are down. And it ran his pants over, left a mark. And that's where the term skid marks on your underwear comes from. That's where it came from. <laughs> um, I, I want to take a second. This is a lot like all the videos we've shown of people jumping off of a roof into a pool. Oh, yeah. Any sort of stunt you can perform around one of these drift car circles is absolutely not worth it. You can get flipped and like die and hit your head on the pavement. And I just want to point out, let's run this back a little bit. When people notice this guy's pants are down from the tire spinning, they start moving in with the flash on. I see 15 people waiting to film this guy's dick and butt. What's just that movie? Like at his lowest moment, you know? Like yeah. this guy's lowest moment, they're going, oh, and moving No one has anyone's you. back anymore. If you have a problem and something happened, you get into a fight or something and you're knocked out, yeah. you're going to get filmed before you're going to get saved. You're going to get night crawler. Yeah. You're going to get like, night crawler before someone tries to help you or break up the fight. They're going to pull their phone out and say, yell world star and hope it's the worst knockout ever. No one has your back anymore. Yeah. Very scary, 100%. especially a situation like that. Who's coming? The police? No, they're in the middle of the road. <laughs> yeah, they blocked it off. They probably have like the police radio scanners on. <laughs> they blocked off traffic. Mm -hmm. So that's where the term skid marks in your underwear comes from. It's uplifting because myself and no one who watches this show would probably ever hang out at a place like that. Yeah, I, I'm very few. We, there's some car guys. I mean, car, there's car guys, car enthusiasts. We love, you know, if you, you specialize in a certain thing, like that's a skill that's actually very nice. Um, but yeah, these loud, these big loud. Uh, this has to be L.A., right? It feels like everything's yeah. L.A., um, but yeah, not the scene you want to be in. There uh, was there was another clip that we we're gonna play, but it actually got deleted. A guy had an energy drink and he opened it up, and there was two dead mice in it. Disgusting. But it got deleted, so I'm assuming he posted it to social media, and then the energy company, probably like Monster or whoever, yeah, like messaged him and was like, "Hey, here's ten grand. Please take the video down now." And we own all the rights to it. Yeah, so I wish I, we had that video because then they would have paid us ten grand too. Yeah, so we made we missed it a little bit late. Bummer. Uh, how about the fear of Michael Jackson, lady? This lady has a phobia. She's scared of Michael Jackson. Hmm. So she's scared of Michael Jackson, and then look right behind her. If you're scared of Michael Jackson, you're not going to like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. You have any weird phobias like that? Like, uh, you know, a person or anything? Any sort of well, thing? When I was little, I used to be scared of uh, little people. Really? Yeah. yeah. I, I used to be very I don't know scared. why I said really. I knew that. Yeah. And but, I know your history with them. Yeah. Uh, but I got over that. But yeah, when I was little, I was very uh, frightened. I just didn't understand it. I just didn't understand what I was dealing with. It was like a, <laughs> an adult child, my height, and I, I really was hard to put two and two together. Okay, fair. How about you? No, nothing. I'm not afraid of Michael Jackson or anything weird like that. I'm not afraid of anything. Yeah, pretty much. I've never cried. <laughs> um, the guy eats shit on dumb bike. Yeah, stupid bike guy. So this guy's on a three-wheeler. When we posted the three-wheeler, when I was saying I want to get a trike, I did not mean this guy's. Yeah. This is like a three-wheeler bike guy and stupid sit-down bike rider. And he's on like a mountain bike 
path. Not good for and it. And he flips. And that's why it's not good for it. <laughs> never he had, flips a, and never he's had trapped. a chance. He never had a chance. I hope this guy isn't uh, using this bike not by choice because he's paralyzed or something. I hope it's just an interesting attempt because yeah. he is flipped over and is in trouble. That's a good point. If this guy's paralyzed or has some sort of uh, issue and that's why he's riding this bike. We apologize. No, 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 no. We don't apologize. You shouldn't be doing those types of ramps. That's how you got injured in the first place. <laughs> That's so now, not what I'm saying. So, <laughs> you're bouncing off. Uh, you're bouncing so off. now I apologize. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's we, not. He's fine. We apologize either way. Um. Okay, next clip. Uh, the bear surprises the guy at the park. This isn't even a good one. This is just funny to me. Guy's at the park expecting to have a normal day. And then in the background it comes Winnie the Pooh. And then he kind of very late looks over. The thing is, I'm always scanning. I would see that guy come in or I would see that guy at the park. Like, you can't get that close to me without me doing, like, a every five-second peripheral check. I okay. Would, I would know. All right. That's fair. Yeah, I was wondering why that video was in there. That seemed like a very average scare. The kid didn't, like, throw a cup or anything. Like, yeah. He, it, this is more to make a point about you, how good you are at peripheral awareness. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you can never really frighten me. All right. Uh, unless you really plan something. There you um, have it. All right, next clip. Proposal faint in the park. Yeah. He proposes. She's very happy. And then she faints. She it's, just goes stiff. And it's not like a fake faint. It's like she's fully passed out and like unconscious now. Did you, speaking of fake faints, um, did you ever have like girls in your class growing up in school who just fainted for attention? Yeah, of course. That's like a standard move, right? Yeah. So yeah. I'm not sure this is that real. She gets a, she's a little stiff and like she goes stiff as a board, no doubt. Her eyes are rolled back. Okay. I think that's real. Okay. I'm suspicious, but, but that impact maybe should have woken her up. I that's what I think. Mm, interesting. But she also didn't fall and try and catch herself. Like the girls in school when they faked it, they would like fall in like fall, a way. Yeah, they didn't fall and like hit their head and yeah. get knocked out. Yeah, they would true. like get caught by the guy in the football team. Like, oh, I'm, yeah. I almost fainted. And, like, <laughs> touch faint on the day of the big test. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Like, whatever. Um, yeah. All right. Next clip. The snack team. Partner in crime. Partner in crime. Snack this is my favorite. This is the true uplifting gold of the yeah. episode. So it says, now I know who's been helping him get the snacks that I put out of reach. So the snacks have been getting eaten and no one knows how the baby can't reach. The dog is the foundation. The baby crawls on the dog, gets the snacks, probably feeds the dog some snacks, too. Definitely. Oh, the dog left. The dog left him high and dry, though. Yep. That's pretty funny. It's interesting because that baby probably doesn't know what the dog can and can't eat. A hundred percent. Yeah. And every time I look up things, like I give Jerry pretty much like anything I'm eating. Human food. Yeah. Whatever. I give him a little piece. And every single thing, like after I look it up, it's always like, never give this to a dog. It Dogs can't eat onions. <laughs> Dogs can't eat sauerkraut. And yeah. It's like, I'm sure if you Google it, the dog can't eat it. But that's funny. That's pure Americana. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Growing up, I used to, um, there's like a family tradition where we'd like steal the dessert before like the dinner so thanksgiving would happen everyone would bring stuff there would be people would bring boxes of desserts mm -hmm. and then my mom like when she was younger her cousins who were always like causing trouble they would cut they cut a hole in the cannoli box and they would like funnel cannolis out of it <laughs> so growing up that was like a tradition which was very lucky for me because then every holiday the joke would be like when you open the dessert there's already a slice of the cake missing there's already <laughs> bites someone had a fork and went right into the thing and it was a bit that it, we were allowed to do. Is this some sort of schizo thing, like where you made it a memory, but really it was just you picking on dessert early? <laughs> it's like, or is this a real family no, tradition? No, it's real, but it's okay. like, why, why is the dessert happy? And it's like, oh, because that's what we do every year. <laughs> it's like, that's what you do every year yeah, exactly. to the dessert. That was $40 yeah. worth of cannolis. Yeah, it's like, ah, oh, but it's, uh, it happened early. It's a bit. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're hungry. Um, so, yeah. Very nice. Um, next, to, actually, this is the last clip. Yeah. Kid bike spill. Little kid bike wreck. Gets the speed wobbles. Kid going Great down the hill, job, going down buddy. the driveway. Uh oh. Oh, buddy. <laughs> oh, fully wipes out. But if you watch in slow motion, yeah. his, his neck breaks. His neck, Aching like, kind of breaks. But his helmet, like, perfectly catches and protects his head. Yeah. So his helmet catches, protects his head elbow pads and knee pads he's like fully actually safe and fine i never 
wore helmets and knee pads and elbow pads or wrist guards or anything because I was like super athletic and my parents knew that. Yeah. And I never, I don't even have to even knock on wood because I'll never ride a bike again. I, I never had like an issue where I got hurt and it was like, oh, you should have been wearing a helmet. I, I just handled it. I yeah. never wore a helmet. Well, I think that the helmet is really for like, if you get hit by a car, you don't just die. You um, know, that yeah. that's what my thing is. We weren't really riding in the street like that. Well, but you are kind of, you, you were always riding in the street. Yeah, but like, like in neighborhoods, in and neighborhoods. Like driveways. 100%. And, um, I had a thing with my parents where like I had ridden bikes with my group of friends. Like we, everybody, when you're a little kid, you do neighborhood bike rides. Mm-hmm. You, you meet up with your squad, you go around on four bikes, you're hanging out. Um, I had one where my parents like tried to get me to wear a helmet when I was like 14, like after I had already been riding without a helmet for like three years. And I was like, no, what are you guys talking about? Um, Not happening. So that was really bad. And I think I'd wear it to like go and then I'd immediately take it off. It was like, I'm the only kid wearing a helmet. Yeah, so it's pretty nerd shit. Apologize to me. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I was athletic AF. My parents knew that. They knew I didn't have to wear any nerd shit either. They trusted me and they were right. I was smart and I never had an issue and never need to wear a bike helmet. My my parents also had another thing where um, if I was rollerblading, like little kid, like mm. if I was rollerblading, I had to wear wrist guards. Because that's the most common like thing. Uh, you know, you fall, you brace yourself, you break your wrist. And I get it. My parents had uh, four kids and they didn't want to go to the hospital for a broken wrist for nothing and pay probably 800 bucks or whatever it was. And do you know what I did? Hmm. I stopped rollerblading. I was going to say it. It was over. How did when, they know you were gay at such a young age? <laughs> they didn't. They guessed. <laughs> <laughs> he likes rollerblades. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so I just stopped. I can't look corny, guys. I can't look corny. Yeah. It can't look corny, and if you do years of not looking corny like we've done, now we can look corny. Like I can wear like the native New Orleans uh, crawfish shirt, which is corny, and it's not corny anymore because I've already established myself as a non-corny. <laughs> you dude. have enough credibility to ride out. So now is the time for corny, which is like the cool counterculture way to dress, so which true. is what I'm up to. Well, so true. Another Fleckus Talks in the Books. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Shopfleckus.com for the best merch in the game. Make sure you sign up for the waiting list for the Contrast debit card. That's a very cool, important thing. And make sure you also get some new Gold River Trading Company tea. The pumpkin spice tea is very good. We love it. Uh, It should be here any day. We're going to be drinking that a lot more. Thank you guys for watching. There's no bonus land this week. There's just not. Uh, so no need to watch bonus land this week. Watch some of the old ones. There's an hour of bonus content every month on patreon.com slash Fleckus or YouTube join. So go ahead and subscribe there, but there will be no bonus episode on Monday. We'll be back to the normal rotation, uh, next week. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you at the next one. Do you want to do a little bit of bonus land right now or just a little bit? You want to talk about the the fight we're going to watch? Oh, yeah. Weekend, or, so mean, we're still on the episode. Um, Sam Hyde. Sam Hyde is uh, fighting on what, Saturday night or Friday yeah, night? I think the 27th, which is Saturday. Yeah. So Sam Hyde is fighting. We love Sam Hyde. He was trying to fight Hassan Piker, but Hassan Piker is scared. Obviously. Um, what's your prescription on those glasses, Hassan Piker? <laughs> um, Sam Hyde is fighting some other guy. It's going to be amazing. We love Sam Hyde. He's looking gigantic. Looks, I would not I would not fight Sam Hyde. I would not fight Sam Hyde either unless it was really financially <laughs> <laughs> beneficial for <laughs> beneficial. me. Beneficial. Uh, but make sure you guys check that out. It's he tried to be, fight Hassan Piker with a million dollar bounty. Yeah. Like a million Hassan, dollars is a lot of money. To Hassan anybody. just said, no, you'll beat me up. Yeah. Did he say that? Yeah. But he, he tried to pretend it was ironic. He's like, no, man, you'll kick my ass. I'm not going to fight. You'll kick my ass. But that's like what it was. Yeah. You'll kick your ass. Yeah. Pretty much. All right. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you at the next one.